Hi everybody, welcome to Newtown Creek. This is one of the uh, oldest industrial waterways still in use in New York City. Uh, the Dutch arrived here in, six, in the 1620s and 30s, found a group of Indians living here who called themselves the Mass Petch. The Mass Petch called this body of water Hojas Bosco. It means the bad water place. Newtown Creek is 3.8 miles long and weaves between Brooklyn and Queens. We always joke that it forms the currently undefended border between Brooklyn and Queens. <laughs> the Newtown Creek is, at, in the 1920s, represented more volume of shipping and commerce than the entire Mississippi River. This is the Gold Coast of the 19th century. On your right side is Greenpoint, Brooklyn. On your left side is Long Island City, Queens. As you can see, the bulkheads are not being used. Uh, they are kind of an impediment to the truck traffic, which is a real shame. There is something like 27 miles of bulkhead riding Newtown Creek, of which only about a mile and a half of it is being used by area companies. It's uh, one of the goals of Newtown Creek Alliance to make sure that the industrial character of Newtown Creek is not lost. We want to see Newtown Creek remain industrial and remain a place where people can work and have jobs. The coming up on your left is the is the foot of the Dutch Hills tributary of Newtown Creek. You'll see two two bridges. One is the swing bridge, which has been burned out since the 1950s and it was installed in 1890. Behind it is a, is a drawbridge which carries traffic of the Montauk Cut-Off extent, Montauk Cut-Off of the uh, Long Island Railroad. On your right is the Newtown Creek Wastewater Treatment Plant and the Whale Creek tributary of, the, of uh, Newtown Creek. Whale Creek is named so, well, let me just say first that the Newtown Creek Wastewater Treatment Plant is on Kingsland Avenue in Brooklyn. Kingsland Avenue was named for Mayor Ambrose Kingsland, who grew rich in Greenpoint in the 1830s on the sperm whale oil trade, which is why Whale Creek is called Whale Creek. It says also that Greenpoint's history as an energy center goes back a lot longer than the oil spill and the standard oil. On your left is the Newtown Creek Dock of the City of New York, which is currently leased under a 99-year agreement with Sings Metal. This is what recycling actually looks like. There's a mythology out there that recycling is done by little elves in clean white suits. It's, done, it's not actually like that. As you can see, it's a rather dirty industry that has an intensive footprint. What used to be on this site, however, is this is a lot better. The original tenant of this site, this was the Long Island Railroad Night Soil and Offal Dock. When a horse took a poop in Manhattan or Brooklyn, when a horse died on the streets of Manhattan or Brooklyn, it was brought here. The industries which were located further up the creek in Queens utilized those raw materials in the manufacture of the wonder chemical of the 19th century, which was sulfuric acid. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we get up the creek. But this is one of the most amazing shows of the creek, and I'm going to uh, get up to there and you guys take a picture.
sorry to the we not stand on the streets that's uh getting hurt. So this battle goes through here. Correct. Uh, I was just uh, I was just asked where this metal goes in Asia. Uh, odds are it's only in China. Burn. 
you might ask. In 1926, he was the borough president of Brooklyn. He died in office, which is mainly what he's remembered for, that and they've named the bridge and the old stone house in Park Slope for him. I can't imagine that patronage goes back that far, but his brother-in-law was the boss queen of Brooklyn, Jim McCooey. Traditionally, we advise that the water quality begins to decline precipitously once you get past the Greenhorn Avenue Bridge. And we recommend that this is not a great place to kayak in. Uh, a friend of mine, Eric Bard from the Long Island City Boathouse, uh, he advises that this is a good place to go back in a rowboat, but he doesn't like the idea of people going back in kayaks here. Too much interaction with the water. The problem in Newtown Creek, as it has been for a hundred years, is the lack of flow. When the, in 1919, when the Army Corps of Engineers installed the water system above it, obviously Greenpoint was demanding attention. The only flow of fresh water into Newtown Creek currently comes from combined sewer outfalls, which Kate will talk about in some detail later, and rain and runoff. The situation has resulted in water, the water column is largely static, and the further back we go, the oxygenization of the water just drops off the whole of the hill. On the Queens Bank, this is the former site of Van Eiderstein's fat rendering. The as we pass this entire bank of the creek, as a matter of fact, you may have seen in the historical record tales of Governor Flowers' smelling thing, in which he sent a group of city politicians down to that creek to confirm whether or not the news says that the citizens were reporting were true. He wanted to find out in fact, did Newtown Creek in fact smell? They came back and the answer was yes. Civil War. On the Brooklyn 
outside. You can see that here again, the community isn't allowed access to their waterfront. And you can also begin to see oil containment booms. We're now passing into the area that's known for the Greenpoint oil spill. You're going to see containment booms on both sides of the creek. They're not necessarily connected to the Greenpoint oil spill itself. They could just be another pool of oil that's leaking up through the bulkheads. I'm not sure what's going on. That's, uh, that was hatred. You know, I, I, was, I was just asked uh, what's going on in that building today, and I'm, uh, I, I'm not sure. It's uh, some business, that's all I can tell you. Uh, that's the brick building with the center block double windows. We just got that. Chase uh, Einar gets his plastic extruder, which sounds good. that Exxon Mobil is going through to uh, to remove the oil from the ground in Greenpoint uh, creates a lot of wastewater. The treatment process involves siphoning the oil out of the ground and replacing it with brackish water that's close to the same specific gravity. If they do it too fast, the ground around Greenpoint will become a sinkhole and the whole neighborhood will, will go away. So what they're doing is they're pumping water back in. This generates a lot of wastewater. And on the Brooklyn side, on your right, you're about to see a pipe, which is one of the returns for the treated wastewater. The uh, blue containers that you see on the Queen side, uh, just beyond that are freight rail tracks. These are the former, uh, these are the former, the former railroad use of these, and they're also used uh, by the freight line New York and Atlantic. We're also passing through the former site of something called Penny Bridge, which was another ancient uh, drawbridge that connected Brooklyn and Queens. Um, it's one of the missing links in, the, in between the two neighborhoods. The historical record and the trolley maps of the 19th century uh, all point to this as being one of the most important spots. As you, from here you can see the main, the old entrance to Calvary Cemetery, and you can see the bulkheads that the Penny Bridge originally uh, sat in. Uh, that's this large structure that you see here on your right and on your left. Uh, these, uh, this is Meeker Avenue in Brooklyn, and this is the corner of your Review and Laurel in Queens. We're approaching the Kosciuszko Bridge, and how could we approach Kosciuszko without saying the name Phelps Dodge? Phelps Dodge was one of the largest employers around Newtown Creek. At its height, 19,000 people worked here. The Elk Dodge brought copper, raw blister copper, from point, all points of the world, from South America, from Africa. They brought it here, they exposed it to a unique process, a unique acid etching process they had devised. What made them unique was they used a Nichols chemical brimstone formula for sulfuric acid. The trustees of Calvary Cemetery in the 1890s actually sued Phelps Dodge because the emanations coming from their smokestacks were melting the tombstones. The, um, Phelps responded by building the tallest smokestack in the United States. And Phelps Dodge would have uh, sat comfortably beneath the Kosciuszko Bridge. Kosciuszko was 1939. It was the first link in something that would eventually metastasize into the Brooklyn Queens Expressway. It was a personal project of Mr. Robert Moses. This bridge is uh, in terrible condition and it's actually rated one of the worst five bridges in New York State. It's scheduled for replacement by the state DOT sometime in the next uh, 10 years. There's a little bit of controversy about which design they're going to go with, whether it be a cable stay or a strut bridge. But it looks like the cable stay is the cheaper one, so it's most likely they're going to build. It's going to have nowhere near the height that the modern Concierge show has, which causes all sorts of problems for trucking engines. The reason for its great height, there used to be a company called American Stevedore, just up the creek. And American Stevedore demanded that ocean-going uh, cruise ships be able to navigate on new temporary to be serviced at their yard, which is uh, just beyond the uh, restaurant depot here. How, how deep is it here? That's the captain on draft. Sorry? How deep is it? The water we're floating in right now is about 30 feet deep. 
the, unfortunately, the bottom of 15 feet of it is occluded in a substance that is known as black mayonnaise. Black mayonnaise is a, a weird agglutination of coal tar, petroleum residue, human excrement, and every other possible, uh, every other possible pollutant that could, that could have found its way down there. Again, this comes back to the problem of lack of flow. Um, because there is no flow in Newtown Creek, sediments just, just tend to accumulate layer after layer after layer. When the EPA begins the Superfund process, their specific mission is to remove that black mayonnaise. Of course, when we put together the length of Newtown Creek, the width of Newtown Creek, and all its tributaries, we're talking about them removing something about the size and mass of the Empire State Building from the water here and removing it from the community. Um, there's uh, a couple of meetings next week, uh, one at St. Nick's in Brooklyn and the other at LaGuardia Community College. If you check my website, NewtownPentacle.com, I just posted details on where the meetings are and what time they are. I would definitely recommend uh, coming by. Uh, EPA can answer several questions directly from the horse's mouth. The tributary that is coming up on your left is Maspeth Creek. Maspeth Creek is something that got bulkheaded off. It originally extended nearly all the way to Flushing. And the, this is where the town docks of Colonial Maspeth would have been found. The Whit Clinton's house was just, uh, was just uh, over here. And again, we're uh, photographers. You definitely want to turn around at this point and see where we're coming from. This is when you get your amazing city views. We're actually coming up on um, one of the great relics of Newtown Creek. In the 1830s and 40s, at Massmouth Avenue, there was an island called Furman's Island. Furman's Island was where Peter Cooper founded his pestilential glue factory after they kicked him out of Midtown Manhattan. We remember Cooper as a great man, B and O Railroad, Transatlantic Railroad, Transatlantic uh, uh, Telephone Cable. We remember Cooper for uh, Cooper Union and for B and O, uh, I'm sorry, B and O Railroad, Canton Iron, and the Transatlantic uh, Telephone Cable. We forget about Peter Cooper's glue factory where he took advantage of the uh, night soil and aqueduct and made a made a famous glue. Peter Cooper glue. It had a picture of him with a beard and everything on it. It's also where Peter Cooper invented Jell-O brand gelatin. If you enjoy Jell-O brand gelatin, never ever ask me how it's where it, how it's made or what it's made of. Furman Island is connected to both Moon Lake and Queens by the Pike Road. The Pike Road is a sort of corduroy affair made of wood. And it was and it had a, uh, a rudimentary drawbridge in the middle that was operated by ropes that went out to a donkey team. We're going to see remnants of the Maspeth Avenue Plank Road uh, in just about a, in just a minute. As you can see, the Brooklyn side is largely petroleum interests here, and these are actually tanks of liquefied natural gas. The Buckeye Pipeline runs along Newtown Creek, and uh, it actually emerges into the ground in Queens near the G-Train Tunnel, tunnel and uh, Vernon Avenue. If you look on the right, though, you'll see that the amazing thing about Newtown Creek, the, the truly amazing thing, is that despite the lack of oxygenization in the water, despite the dioxins and the PCBs, that there's an amazing amount of animal life here, and there's actually higher animals. As you see, there's a uh, pretty nice little scene of a bird sitting there on the shoreline. That's an egret, I'm told. I make it a point of not identifying animals when I'm on the microphone, because I'm always wrong. You got it right, it's a bird. <laughs> you, got, you got the species. <laughs> Nature abhors a vacuum. Um, the facilities that you see on your uh, that you see on the Queen side, these belong to the Department of Sanitation, New York. The facilities you see on the Brooklyn side, um, it's a variety of uh, of operations, concrete factories. Uh, there's a couple of junkyards. I'm sorry, recycling scrapyards. 
These uh, pieces of wood sticking out of the uh, sticking out of the creek here have actually been here since the Civil War. These are the remains of the Massmouth Avenue Plank Road.
And it, it's funny because it, this is one of the few places in North America where you find legal contracts between the state of New York and the indigenous Indians who are just out and out buying the land from them. And they actually did fairly well in the deal. You know, it's like I don't like the guys who sold Manhattan for 38 beads. You know, the, uh, the the Newtown Creek guys were a little bit uh, a little bit uh, slyer. And uh, the the uh, the goal of the Europeans when they got here was mainly just to get make that money. You know, and they were going to exploit whatever they could to get to get the money. Um, Um, at that, I'm going to pass the microphone over to Kate Zidar at this point. Okay. 